It's no secret that I absolutely love TB heads. To call it my passion would be a pretty disgusting understatement. The unique aesthetic has grabbed not only me, but a rapidly growing number of other cosplayers. However, there's a pretty important question that needs to be posed as more and more people cosplay TB heads. What are they? And where did they come from? Aside from how heavy is that, this is the number one question I get at conventions. I probably get asked this every 15 minutes while I'm cosplaying. And it isn't that I mind it, it's just that up until recently, I really couldn't effectively answer it. I didn't really know. I knew that I'd been into the aesthetic for a really long time, but I couldn't really tell you what the motif was and where it originated from. That was until I sat down and did some research. So. Today, allow me to take you on a short little trip explaining the rise and proliferation of the object head aesthetic and more specifically, the TV head aesthetic as a whole. If we're being honest, the object head motif really has its roots in the surrealist art movement of the 1930s. However, this is barely an influence on the culture today. Instead, let's skip ahead to 2001 and take a look at one of the first true object heads in modern media. Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head hails from Silent Hill 2 and may still be to this day the most prolific object head in our media zeitgeist. Though many still wouldn't consider this to influence what object head culture is today, one can't deny that Pyramid Head was one of the first characters to really open people's eyes to the object head motif. It wasn't until 2003, two years later, with the release of Fooly Cooly, that we got a glimpse of Conti, one of the earliest known true TV heads. While Pyramid Head is the most prolific object head, Conti is by far the most prolific TV head. In fact, most of the time when I mention Fooly Cooly to people, they immediately understand what I'm talking about. They immediately realize the aesthetic and where it come from because they know Kanti. Seeing Kanti on screen was an exceedingly surreal thing in an exceedingly modern way. This strange connection between something so human and inhuman at the same time. It was unique, truly unique, and kickstarted many people's interest in the aesthetic, including mine. From here on, the growth of the aesthetic became gradual yet consistent as social media platforms began to bloom and the sharing of art and ideas became ever easier. People began to create object head OCs or original characters. With the rise of DeviantArt around 2007 and Tumblr coming around 2008 and 2009, people began to share tons of artwork about object heads. It grabbed people, ignited people in such a truly unique way. Heck, people were making object heads out of everything. It was amazing. It was a way to express an interest in a unique, prolific way. In 2011, the most notable object head Tumblr blog, with the URL simply object heads, was founded. It has since been consistently sharing object head art, and it sort of became a hub for the aesthetic, not only on Tumblr, but across the internet as a whole. Shortly after, this spawned the first object head zine, a yearly collection of art and media centered around all types of object heads. Seriously, please check out the zine. They have such amazing stuff each and every year. As we move along, a good number of people actually cite Cuphead as a piece of object head media, with characters like King Dice and heck, even Cuphead and Mugman themselves. Though most don't outwardly consider the game object head adjacent, it's hard not to talk about its influence. So that puts us here. 2019. We've answered the question of where, but we still haven't really talked about the what. It'd be really easy to end this video with the textbook definition of an object head, which is a human with an inanimate head. However, object heads truly are so much more than this. Object heads are a culture of creativity really unlike any other. It's an aesthetic that provides a tabula rasa with a niche for really anyone. A person's passion, their style, their brand can take a personified form, making it so much more real, so much more personal. And cosplaying object heads makes this infinitely more apparent. It's a chance to bring this idea to life, this idea of a personification of your passion. It's this incredibly personal, incredibly validating version of yourself that sparks joy in so many unstatable ways. But at the end of the day, isn't that what all cosplay is about? The chance to be our favorite version of ourselves. 
So, there you have it. I hope I was able to some degree answer the question of what the heck is this? Where the heck did it come from? But now I'm gonna hopefully help you answer the question of how can I get one? I have a full tutorial on my YouTube channel. If you wanna make one yourself, it goes from like A to Z of what you're gonna need and how to do it. But if maybe you don't have access to power tools or you don't feel comfortable, any number of reasons, I do commissions. I make object heads that look like this and like this and I would love to make one for you. It truly is something I love doing. There is an Etsy link at the top of the description below. Please check it out if you're interested. I have all, tons of information there. You can message me there too if you're confused. And beyond that, what's your story of cosplay passion? What is it about cosplay, not just with object heads, that makes you go, I love doing this. I love cosplay. Please let me know in the comments down below. I'm actually very interested to hear. But above all else, guys, be safe, make good choices, have a wonderful day, and peace out.